Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel code one digest today in this tutorial I'll show you how can you write a QR code generator in a spring boot framework Yes, friend. I'll show you how can you create your own QR code generator in a spring boot and before that I'll explain you what is QR code what are libraries you need to generate a QR code and then you can write a code to generate a QR code Right friend. So it is going to be very very exciting and very informative tutorial today so watch this tutorial till end okay friends so here is the agenda of this tutorial i'll give you introduction of spring boot qr code generator project then we'll understand what is qr code as i said then i'll show you the architecture of this project so we'll understand what all modules are there what all components are there as part of this project then i'll show you how to set up the spring boot project then i'll explain you the pomodoro xml file what all dependencies are required for generating the qr code in a spring boot project then we will be coding write a code to generate the qr code using some libraries which can help us in generating the qr code then finally i'll show you what is my application configuration looks like what all configuration required to generate the qr code also give you the reference of my github repository so that you can download the code and play with it and Finally, I'll be running this application and testing the QR code generator what I've created. Okay, friends So let us spend two minutes on understanding what is QR code If you are new to this term QR code, then please spend one minute on this slide QR code also called as quick response code is a two-dimensional barcode what you see on top of my head It was first developed in Japan in 1994 and QR code is a machine readable optical label that contains data or information about an item. So in practice, QR code often contain data for a locator, identifier or tracker that points to a website. QR code can be a URL of any website or URL of any profile or a registration page, right? Once we generate this QR code, you can read the QR code through your smartphone as well. So there are specific devices available in the stores which can scan the QR code and that shows them the information on their screen. But now your camera is equipped to read the QR code and tell you the information what is there in the QR code. The QR code is an encoded form of information. Your camera of a smartphone can read the QR code and decode this information and show you on your screen what is that QR code talking about. Okay, if it is a URL, then it will ask you to open a browser. So that it can navigate you to that URL or if it's just a text information that it will show you on your screen let's understand the architecture of this application what exactly this application doing and what all internal modules some modules are there in the in this application this is a user we have on the extreme left side it has two ways to generate the QR code right it can come through a console input and QR code controller that is our rest controller through API the user can choose either of this channel to generate a QR code right and once the input is given let's say it is coming through console it will give input and it will come to our business layer class that is QR code generator service this is our business layer this is a where this is where our business logic is there to generate the QR code right you come through a console or you come through API it will go to the same business layer class same business layer method to generate the QR code once QR code is generated it will be saved into this location okay in this folder and this folder location is coming from the configuration QR code generator configuration so the config is giving where to save the QR code so it is going to this folder location and then user can access those QR code in this folder directly okay so this is a very simple application it has this four modules one is console input second is controller our rest controller third is our business layer class where our business logic is there to generate the QR code and fourth is the configuration which is giving the location of the folder where QR code to be generated right friends very simple this is what we are going to see in the code now friends before we proceed in this video i request you to subscribe this channel to grow code one digest family friends i am creating a lot of quality videos on programming coding concepts design pattern and design principles cloud and container technologies but i'm not getting subscribers i request you to like 
share and subscribe this channel so that I can grow our Code One Digest family. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Before we jump to the coding, let me tell you what all tools we are using. So I'm using Java 8. I'm using IntelliJ ID and I'm using Postman for my testing. Right. So these three major tools are there. If you don't have, you can install these softwares. Okay, friends. So let us start with the project setup of our QR generator in Spring Boot. Okay. So open the Google and search for Spring Initializer. Click on that. This form will open for you. This is a tool which will help you in creating your Spring Boot project. You can select the options available on this form and then it will create all the dependencies, all the configuration files accordingly for you. I am creating a Maven project, hence I am selecting the Maven. Now select a language, which language you are comfortable on. You can, you can select the language of your choice. I am using Java. And then you mention the Spring Boot version. So let me use 2.7.16 and then give your group name. I am giving cod dot qr code generator, right? QR code generator and the package name you can correct it if you see any anomalies. And I am using Java 8 and then you have to click generate. So what it will do is it will download a zip file of your project. So you can download that into into your local directory and then unzip that into your local folder and then we'll import the project into our IntelliJ IDE. Okay friends, so I have unzipped that zip file into a folder here. All the files are here in this folder. And now what I'll do is I'll open the IntelliJ and we'll import that as a new project. Click on the open or import project and go to the directory where this location is there. So this is the location and select a POM, right? And then say, okay and load this form as a project file not a file but load this form as a project file right once it is done then the project will be loaded into your intellij let's do it okay friends i have loaded the project into my intellij id and this is the project structure what i have this is the root of my project and i have source where i have my source folder where i have all my source code and all my configuration file right all the code are inside that right this is my pom.xml so let us see the pom.xml first. I'll show you what all dependencies I have in the pom.xml for this project. I have written few dependencies into the pom.xml that is required for generating the QR code. So if you see in my pom.xml, I'm using the version 2.7.0 and Java version is 1.8. And if we come down to dependencies, I have a Spring Boot starter and then I'm using Spring Boot web. Then the primary dependencies for us is this Google Zing. Okay, Google Zing Core and Google Zing Java SE. So these are two main dependencies that we need to have libraries to generate the QR code. Right. So very simple pom.xml. Now let me show you the code. Now let us see the source of this project. Let me open the source folder. Let's go to main Java. And this is my main class. Let me open that. So you see, this is my Spring Boot application. This is my main class where I have the public static white main method. And this method is standard, no change in this. In this class, I have auto wired my business layer class that is QR code generator service. So this I have auto wired it here, right? And then I have implemented command line runner interface. Why? Because I want to take input from my command line. Hence, we would need this interface to be implemented. As soon as you say implement this interface, then you have to override run method, right? So here in this run method, we have written the code in a while loop so that continuously we can read from our console, right? We can take input from console all the time. I have used the scanner and then I'm reading line by line. So whatever user is entering and hitting the enter key, then it will read that whole message, okay? So that will come into this input message. I'm logging what the input message is. And finally, I'm calling business layer method that is generator, generate QR code of QR code generator service. Now we'll see this service, how it is generating the QR code for the input message, which is given by the user. Let us do that. Now let me show you the service layer. I will also show you another channel 
when the input message is coming through a API call. Okay, our post API call. Let me show you this service layer first. So this is my business layer class. This is service component, right? And in this class, I am reading the output location. That is where I have to generate the QR code. The location where this QR code file will be generated is coming from my configuration file. QR code output directory is defined in my application.properties file. It is coming from there. We'll see that. I'll show you the configuration file later. I have defined a few constant like character set. I have to use UTF-8 and I have to use the date format is this, right? This method we are calling from our main application as well as in our controller. So we have two channels, two input channels. One is our console and one is API. So in both the cases, this method will be called and it takes message as input. So this object, string object will contain the message for that we have to generate the QR code. So first we are checking if if the message is null. If it is null, then we will just replace it with the empty string. This is just to avoid any null error, null pointer exception error later stage. If message has a value, if it has value, then we'll use the message as is. And that will go to process QR code method. So this is our important method. But before that we'll see we are preparing the file name. So process QR code method is an important method and it takes this four or five parameter. Let me show you. This is a message. What message we want to generate the QR code for and the file name, the absolute path of the file name that is folder location plus the file name inside that folder. So this is the absolute path of the file name, character set UTF-8 and height and width of the image. In this method prepare output file name we are preparing the output folder location so here the location will come from our configuration file then we are appending it this is a prefix for our qr code file qr code hyphen prefix with the timestamp that means date and timestamp it is a good practice to append the timestamp and then extension is dot png this will give me the complete path of folder location plus the file name and this will go to inside this method process QR code method. Let me go to the process QR code method. Okay, so it takes data that is message, path of the file, character set, height, and width of the image. Now, finally, we call the uh, we are using the bit matrix class, and this is coming from Zing. Okay, so this is a, this is coming from Google dot Zing library, and we are calling the encode method where we are passing the character set. That is UTF-8 and type of barcode is here. QR code we are selecting and width and height of the image that we want to generate. Now this object that what we have prepared matrix will go inside this matrix to image writer. This is actually writing, creating the QR code for you. Okay, after encoding. So in this class, we have a static method write to file. And here we are giving the matrix object and here is the file name like qr code hyphen timestamp dot png this particular substring is removing the dot png extension only giving up to the file name and last parameter is the file that we are creating with the absolute path of our qr code file so it takes three attributes matrix the file name and location without extension and last parameter is the file with absolute path of our file name that we have prepared earlier now what I'll do is I'll show you another channel. That means when the request comes through our controller. Okay, let us see the controller class also. This is my QR code controller class and this is of type REST controller. So I have auto wired my business layer class that is QR code generator service. Now I have only single endpoint defined here QR code and it's of type post mapping. And it will read the data from a body in form of a string user will provide as a part of post call will come to this endpoint then this api will pass that information to business layer class that is qr code generator service dot generate qr code so this method we are calling from controller as well as main class when the input is coming from console so as we have seen in the architecture diagram right you have two input channel one is the console and one is the api in both the scenario we are calling the same business layer class same service layer class okay generate qr code either of the ways the process of generating the qr code will be the same 
right it should receive a message here and then it will generate the qr code exactly the same way okay friends so now let me show you my configuration file how it looks like so go into resource folder open application.properties file and here we have defined only the location where the qr code file will be generated so this is qr code dot output dot directory this is i have defined you can name it anything and use the same in the code and this is the location where i am generating the qr code files right you can define the location as per your setup and then all the qr code will be generated in this location so now what i'll do is i'll run this application and show you how can we test it from a console and from api let me do that let me run this application okay compiling and building the application now it's starting the server yeah so it says server started so it says server started on 8080 and it's ready to take input that's the first channel that is console and see if the qr code is getting generated right let me do that okay let me give input this is qr code generator testing right and say enter the qr code is generated it says so input message that is received here is this is qr code generator testing and output directory is this final input message is this and the file is generated at this location and the file name is qr code and this is a timestamp 2023 this is today's date 12:57:02. this is a time okay so now let us go to a directory and see if the file is generated this is a directory what i have configured in a configuration and this is a qr code which is generated let us open this yes this qr code is generated okay friends so now let me scan the qr code we'll show what is the value it's coming let me open the camera open the qr code and let this scan it right let me do one more time open the camera scan it so do you see the message coming this is qr code generator testing right this is what we have given the input from our console right so the message is coming correctly the message is encoded correctly into qr code so it is working fine okay friends so as we have seen the message is correctly encoded and generated the qr code rightly and that we have successfully scanned through our mobile now what i'll show you i'll show you the another channel where i'll be calling this api to generate the qr code let me do that so do you see this is a collection i have created and this is the endpoint i'll name it qr code generator yes let me save this you see it's type post localhost 8080 and the endpoint is qr code in the body i'll give this is qr code generator testing from api call right now let me hit this yeah so it's 200 this 200 response and it says created qr code let us see the logs yes the so request came here the controller is called here the input message is this is qr code generator testing from api call and it has called the service layer and it has generated the qr code let us see the qr code again so the second qr code that is what is generated let me open this and you can also scan through your mobile i'll also scan through my mobile and show you what is the message coming okay so let me scan this now let me scan this qr code and see what is the message coming yeah so this is a qr code generator testing from api that means this message came from the api call right so it is working fine it is absolutely working fine now one more testing i'll do where i'll give the url of of my website let's say i am giving a url of my channel this is the url of my channel i'll give that as a body here i'll generate the qr code for this url you can give the same url into console but it will be very difficult to type say send right so it says generated let us see the logs one more time yeah the request came here input message is this url and it says it's generated let us see so we have created third qr code let us scan this and see what it says you can also scan and browse that url it should take you to the home page of my youtube channel let me do that so let me scan the third qr code this is a third qr code yeah and it shows this is a url it shows option i can say open in a browser so it is opening in a browser and yes it is coming directly 
to the home page of my youtube channel right so likewise you can give the url of any website or your profile page so you can generate the qr code as per your requirement as we have tested both the channels by providing the input and generating the qr code and it's absolutely working fine right so you can generate a qr code as per your requirement for a given project i know there are a lot of free tools are available in market to generate the qr code but it's very exciting to generate a utility which you can use where you can generate a qr code yourself okay friends so you need not to worry about the code the code is provided this is my repository code one digest and this is a project is spring boot qr code generator project just go and you can clone the code from this repository and run it in your local you can modify it as per your requirement you can change it you can change the configuration you can change the code you want to add your business logic over there and start using it it is always exciting to use something what you have built it yourself right rather than the utilities are available and you may have a requirement in your project to generate a qr code for certain purpose right hence you have to automate that process you may have to do that again and again hence it is always a good practice to write your own utility so use this code create generator as per your requirement okay friends so let me summarize what we learn in this tutorial today i gave you introduction of spring boot qr code generator project what is this application all about we understood what is qr code then i shown you the qr code architecture design for this application what all modules what all components we have like we have two component to take input from a user that is console and api then finally is given to the business layer and that is where the qr code is generated and plays into our folder and this configuration of a folder is coming from our config file i explained you the pom.xml file what all dependencies are required like google zing spring boot starter web and so on then i showed you the configuration file where the location of our output folder is defined and that is what is used in the business layer to save the generated qr codes Finally, I also gave you a reference of my GitHub repository, Code One Digest GitHub repository, so that you can download the code and play with it. And I have shown you by running and testing the application, we have generated three QR codes. One is from console, and two are from API through API channel. Right? We have also generated a QR code for a URL, and we were able to successfully browse it in a browser. right friends so if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel so do subscribe to my channel to grow code one digest family thank you oh wow that is really that's amazing friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues This is very useful information for students, beginners and software engineers. I am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents. So please help me growing the Code One Digest family. Please subscribe to Code One Digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos. Thank you.